new day and I hope I can get through um, this scenario today actually but uh, we did a couple of the phases in the San Anisa turn um, supply is good across the board the I drop I reorganized a new unit and threw a couple of uh, my reorg points into a couple of those other units I have a big stack of insurgency units I think it's time that I'm gonna have to fire them off the reason being I really don't have enough oomph left to crack this knot um, and I've got to do it I've got to do it very quickly I'm on turn four there's only seven in this turn in this game I've got to get Managua to have any chance um, once Managua falls the rest is pretty much guaranteed at, at this point okay uh, but what do we do oh wait a minute I have another unit there that one's even more important to actually reorganize I think rather than some unit in the back back here that I might need to move up okay but we want to build up our forces so that we have some chance of making of launching the attack something I noticed just now is that I should have an out of supply marker on these fuckers and that makes a big difference because their strength is halved now so they're only one point each which means their total defensive strength is three um, there's no way of tracing supply back anywhere <laughs> uh, and that is an issue and I have no depots for the Samosa. I could have conceivably gotten them depot supply for a little bit. Depot supply is kind of weird. It's like all the cities kind of have enough supplies that you could form one um, until you're out of them. <laughs> to take this action, which is to shift down to here. I'm allowed to go from zone of control to zone of control if I spend my full movement allowance. Um, and basically what we're doing is trying to tighten that knot since this is only a two strength unit yes it's in a town uh, i'm gonna have some trouble facing it but um i've got to put some pressure on this turn things to point out and again i'm having to look these things up as i go the out of supply marker that i placed here i knew that that was out of supply during this samosa turn but it would even if it hadn't been if somehow samosa had lost supply um, during their turn it would have been possible, uh, first of all, they could have slipped away, but we'll leave them alone there. Uh, it, it could have been possible uh, that it would fall out of supply. It's a joint supply phase. It doesn't say that um, directly in the name. It's like the supply phase under communist ground and airspace, but it handles both players uh, as far as I can see. So there you have that now what i'm worried about is the insurgency placement and the decision of the timing of my riots if i place my riots now um the samosa will not be able to do anything for the rest of the game <laughs> because they won't be allowed to attack uh and i could have done it quite a long time ago all right i better look up my understanding on the riots because they just make the game on him they, they make the game uninteresting um because basically there are two supply sources back here and that's it and i could have cut them long long ago the only other samosa supply source is up here um if the samosa can't attack they can't get rid of the riots they can't get rid of their out of supply condition this all was goofy um, in which case, why am I even playing? Why does this scenario exist? The allied player must initiate ground combat. You're not allowed to. Yeah. Um, this scenario is stupid. <laughs> I mean, it's set up. So that it's trivial for the Sandinistas to win. And I don't like that, but uh, 
I guess we'll play it out as is. Uh, so no reason that I don't place my riots now. What the fuck? <laughs> and let's see, we'll put one here. Because you're not allowed to attack if you're out of supply. And boom. All of Samoza is out of supply at this point. Which, of course, makes all these defenses much easier to bust through. Not out of supply yet, but uh, I've changed some of my movement uh, for various reasons to allow me to place uh, my units more quickly. This is going to be over quickly. It should have been over much, much quicker. I could have just done this turn one and knocked out the Samosas very fast. But instead, I'm going to take my time on this. Um, there are some possibilities here, but I'm dropping all my insurgencies. I've spent all my points on them. Uh, I might end up making some different choices, depending on how my die rolls go. But, uh, we look for the rule, the chart, that tells us how we get those. Here it is. Okay, we want to place them in cities or towns. <laughs> those are the best places. Well, okay. I'm going to try to place one in each of these spaces. So this is a forest, which is not bad. I have a plus one because it's in its home country. I roll a two, I didn't get this one. Uh, I'll do it in the adjacent forest as well. I've got a unit for each of them. Hey, no luck there either. Okay, well that sucked. Um, These are both towns. Let me do it in this town here. That sounds like a good place. At the plus one, I was guaranteed to get one. The question is, would I, uh, would I have to pay an extra point? I've got two more coming to me. Uh, is this a town? This is just a rough. That's not very good. If I'm not going to attack this turn, I don't want to do it there. I'll do it in the forest there. Four, that gets me one, and I'm not happy, but, oh shit, I shouldn't be doing it right now, because these out of supply markers were not placed until, uh, are not placed yet, but fuck it, uh, <laughs> there, there's a reason, so the air units are in supply right now, they can do counterinsurgencies, they won't be able to next turn, but here's the thing, um, they will, because I can reshift, I can shift all my planes up there. So there's not going to be a delay. Had I taken this supply source, had the mesquites taken it, it would have had an effect on the airfield. This is the thing I didn't consider. And I don't know if that guy was worth sending down without grabbing it. But again, we'll see how this all plays out. I've obviously not played the Sandinistas to their optimal capability because you should be able to knock the Samosas out by now, probably. <laughs> Do I want to play in the rough? You know, I don't have space, because I've already got a unit there. Uh, do I want to put another one in somewhere? I could actually put one down here. I can't put one here. I don't have, I only, I only had two units. I can only create two shots at it. Uh, yeah, let's, let's put one there, I guess. Now let's take a point back. I've had enough failures that um, I think, okay. So now for counterinsurgency, I basically need two doubled. Uh, well, I, I need three points, um, but they're A's, so they're doubled. So this and this would each succeed at a counterinsurgency check. And all I have to do is fly in and prevent them. There's no counter error, so I'll prevent this one because that's a modifier. And I will prevent, and actually, I will create a new, I can go back 40 hexes. I'll create a new air base over here, or a new air group, to take these additional units. And that'll be put down here. Um, and then this other one, um, which one do I want to knock out of play? 
I didn't create in the rough. I must have created another one. I don't know if I had another success. I think I just had the one success. Okay. Neat. Okay. So I do my one counterinsurgency. And and this is the thing, you can make your mind up as you're going to stop, you know, you don't have to pre pre-allocate all of them. I spent my points and was prepared to do so, but I decided against it. Um because my success rate was too low and he had his counterinsurgency. So I got some things down. Really screwed up with that. Uh, again, all the implications aren't always obvious and that is going to be the case the more you play. Like even in the, in the larger scenarios, you're making decisions, you think they're the right thing and some rule or some concept that in, in this whole pile of tiny little uh, special effects essentially, is going to foil your plan. Um, it's, a, it's a weird sort of situation. It's something kind of like how I remember SFB being, where you pull a rule out of your ass uh, of something that nobody expects, and it does have the surprise value, you know, like the suicide shuttle or something like that. Sometimes it'll have the surprise value because your opponent just doesn't remember a rule. And then once something becomes, you know, part of the canon of your little play group, as in this is often effective, I've got to keep my mind on this, then people go hunting through the rules and find some other thing. It's not like that for me. I don't know these rules well enough to be in the hunting for rules to try to find some trap for the enemy, but <clears throat> it is quite possible that I will stumble into capabilities, you know? And, and, and that is... It's vaguely the same kind of thing. It's just the mindset is different. It's not like I'm reading through the rules, reading through the rules, reading through the rules, continuously trying to find those traps. Instead, I'm still at the point where they just kind of blunder into, into happening. Okay. Um, so that was the Allied Counterinsurgency. I want to do some dismandments. I want to take multiple shots at my dismandments because what the hell. Um, these are in the forest. I've got them set up. Nope. And the second one, I'm rolling real nice low dice here. Second one's a three. That's a yes, but it's got a plus one. The plus one doesn't affect me. I get this guy back and I get an insurgency point back. Now, insurgency points are actually limited, right? <laughs> um, unlike the reorg points, which I can get more back by killing units, the insurgency points I do not get that from. Okay. Uh, no air missions on defense unless there was an attack. I mean, this is something that happens during the combat anyway. It's a special time for missions. Let me consider whether or not there are any attacks. Uh, there's certainly going to be one here. I don't think there are any, any anywhere else. This is the painful point, is chipping this away even without supply. Here, um, I was at a nice 2 to 1. It would have been 3 to 1 if I had been able to uh, get that counterinsurgency unit, and that's a big difference. Uh, rolled a decent die roll. Modifiers canceled out, whatever, but um, the retreat is ignorable in a city. And uh, all I did was one step loss which isn't going to affect their strength. It does give me one point for an upgrade, which, yeah, I guess we'll do. Uh, <laughs> I, I, the problem is I'm running low on these. One, two, three, four, five of them. And I've only got six points left, but uh, I think it's worthwhile. Okay. Uh, I didn't set up any reser uh, reserves for whatever reason. I don't see a purpose. Um, and now we roll again to disband my two units in the forest. So let's see. Hey, we succeed. Let's get one off the map. And we succeed. Oh, I already removed the other one. Never mind. Okay, so we were succeeded with one. That gets me an insurgency point back. Um, and now during reinforcements. We don't have one off the board, but I do get to take that point and get myself a unit instead of one of these insurgency units. Um, probably do this guy. And 
next turn, <laughs> everything goes out of supply anyway, except for Managua, but, um, which has a riot in it. Uh, everything's out of supply at this point, except for this air group, for whatever that values. I am allowed to do very little. Um, I can move around if I want or whatever. It doesn't do me much good. I'm just trying to hold a perimeter here. Um, I don't really want to let people slip in to hexes, I don't think. I think, I don't know. I'm trying to, I, you know, these uh, dealing with clusters, uh, depending on the game, can cause real issues. And this game because of the, um, you know, like the initial setup, everything was all clustered together. That was painful. But now, here's the question. Um, is it better to have all my units in one hex? Well, as many as I can. Or is it better to have them spread out? Um, the guys in here can attack this hex. I, I can launch attacks on this hex. And then it ends up, I could actually throw in units from both hexes and get an attack. Uh, but if this hex is empty, what does that mean? I, I don't fucking know. You know, <laughs> it's like trying to calculate out, um, that mass of spaghetti seems too painful. So I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to sit here. Um, for rebases, the helicopter's fucking useless from now on because it's out of supply. I could fly at 10 hexes away if there was something I could base at. But there's no place it's going to find supply. I don't have any depots, so I can't create supply that way. Uh, Samoza is just fucked. It's just a question of how long it's going to take to crack that nut. I was much, much more worried before when they had supply. At this point, it's going to be a little easier. But it could have been like this right from the beginning of the game, right? <laughs> you know? uh, I have no idea um, why this scenario is of any interest to anyone. Uh... Just because of those rides. Uh, they're, they're the thing, um, the way the riots are and the way that the, uh, the supply work, rules work, that just paralyzes Samoza at the end. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to do a fucking thing in the world. <laughs> because there's really nothing I can do. Except I can shift these two planes using a transfer strike to get them um, out to the other air base. That's it. Um, and those will have, I don't know when, uh, I don't know when the supplies are removed. I think that'll get me one more turn of counterinsurgency. Nope, starting with game turn five. So yeah, it's not going to do me a damn bit of good. I've just gotten my planes, you know, out of out of the Managua area. That's that's it. Um, is there anything else that can happen? I don't think so. I think we're just on the next turn. Yeah, this is a, a waste of a scenario. Um, but whatever. One thing I think I, I think better in some ways, at least <clears throat> when I'm doing this, uh, the video. Uh, playthroughs because I have played this scenario before I seem to vaguely remember thinking this was sort of the first of the cool scenarios you know it, it kind of showed something neat and now I've learned something now it is an introductory scenario so maybe the point of it is to show you something like this I don't know <laughs> how the 79 revolution should end because you can just totally Take, uh, take the fangs out of the Somoza, and they won't be able to fight even a defensive uh, situation. I don't know for sure, um, but, uh, you know, I've, like I said, I've played it before, I don't remember coming to this observation. And so by doing it in this circumstance, or maybe in an opposed game where somebody challenges and says, hey, wait a minute, don't I have these riots? Can't I use them this way? Or don't you have these riots? Can't you use them this way? That kind of statement often, uh, you know, leads to, let's look through the rules for 20 minutes, and, oh yeah, wow, this scenario sucks. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I actually started looking at the situation um, from the Sandinista point of view. I realized, wow, uh, no, I can't 
do what I'm doing. Um, an attack on Managua would have been possible immediately. So I reversed and moved some units out. Um, we have abandoned this town. We've abandoned our air group here. Uh, these are major things. I mean, there's just no way we can hold out. But the point was Managua could have fallen uh, through this unit just moving into here and launching an attack. So again, <coughs> you know, avoid certain mistakes. Uh, sometimes backpedal a little bit. Uh, other than that, there's just really nothing um, to do. So I will start the ground unit movement. Um, I did the reorgs already for them, and uh, I'll go back to trying to figure out how I want to move these ground units. But as it stands, it's just not in, in good shape for, uh, uh, for the samosas. Crushing the nut closer. Um, one of the most painful things is this is still a very strong position, although it doesn't have the attack helicopter able to help anymore. Uh, where I probably want to commit a fair amount of forces to attack, I do not have shit room for an insurgency unit there. I thought I did. I have room for one there, but I couldn't arrange that properly. I'm just trying to look at what I need to attack. So like if I use these two units to attack there, I've got to attack this. And if I'm using this unit in there, then I've got to make the attack here, etc. But you can see the, the nut is closing. The only question is whether or not I get off attacks. The big one, clear this thing out because then I'm coming from all sides. Uh, I could have moved into here, but that doesn't really help me terribly. I could have actually, one, two... Three, four, had I had fast enough unit, and I have one, gotten into here. But again, that opens this hex up, and I don't, don't want to attack Managua yet. Um, had it been left open as weakly as it was with a one strength unit, yes, I would have charged it and hit it and, and done a lot of damage, probably, uh, probably taken it. Okay. Um, so where the hell am I? I'm on the insurgency placement. I have a lot of insurgency points and no capability to counterinsurge because that supply source is gone. So we'll be trying to place some of these. I don't know if all, we're gonna need all of them. Um, the main reason being just really space. You know, I definitely wanna try to build here. I would love to, to build here, but the chances are so low that I don't know if it's wise. A few additional placements, and I did try here, ended up, you know, wasting a point on it, whatever. Uh, but we got significant amounts, including right in here, etc. Just trying to make life really, really easier for the finish because we only have a couple of turns left. Hit this thing again. It's a city. Cities are hard to dislodge people from. I got one with a retreat that does one step. Uh, it's taking forever to whittle this down. I can only imagine Managua is going to be the same. I don't think the Sandinistas are going to win because I didn't understand the implications that, hey, there's not really a scenario here. We're just, you know, digging them out of their positions. <laughs> there's nothing, there's no thought here. There's planes, but there's no reason for them because you can cut them out of supply. Trivially, trivially. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that basically this game doesn't show off uh, the capabilities of the full, you know, insurgency, etc. the way I thought it did in a smaller scale. What it did, does is shows off the use of the special rule, rule of riots that this scenario and maybe a couple others use. But <laughs> that's all it's really meant to. Um, to indicate how you can use riots when the other person has no supply uh, or very limited supplies. Uh, that's pretty much what I think this scenario is about, and I'm pretty pissed about it at this point. Off attack over here, retreated back. That allows me to get two units on each of these hexes, or two stacks on each of these hexes, which I think is probably my best option. And I think this is my battle position. Um, we caused the step loss here. Here they had a retreat that they couldn't just ignore. They would have had to take another step loss. So we caused three step losses. We've got it way up on the odds chart because of the engineer. But I realized I forgot something. The engineer is a support unit, even though it shows as a brigade. And I could have tried to get um, an, insert, an insurrection piece or an insurgency piece. Yeah, sorry. 
the issues of the capital, you know, um, have uh, in, in there as well and gotten an additional bonus or more force on there. Uh, it's looking like I'm going to be able to take Managua, though. Um, and in that case, I've got one, two, three, four, five cities. I think that gets me to the victory, to the marginal victory. Um, all I really have to do to complete this Actually, no, there's six cities, so I'm already at the, the medium victory, is take these two additional cities, which should be easy enough. Um, this was turn five. I get one of these things where, you know, tap, I think is this. So now this is no longer controlled. It wasn't anyway, but it's just becoming uglier and uglier. Um, and it has stacking issues just being created by that thing. Um, but that's okay. But we're just whittling this shit down. I don't know why I'm bothering to play, but... Uh, I get my reinforcements, I guess. Which are... Oh, I destroyed the helicopter by going in there. I, I mean, it had nowhere to go. What the fuck? I don't want to keep it on the board. It, it, it could retreat somewhere, but it's just not of any worth. It's never going to be in supply. Um, because I'm not allowed to attack those rioters. And that's going to put me to the reinforcement phase where I have three more options. Um, I got one guy I want to upgrade next turn, maybe. Uh, I don't really know that I want to convert my uh, <laughs> insurgency unit into non-insurgency, but what the hell, why not? Potential advantage to upgrading them is that uh, if I take next turn to reorg, then I have one turn with a two-strength unit. The insurgency units are better than these reduced-strength um, FSL, uh, regular FSLN units. Uh, or whatever the fuck they're called. I can't remember <laughs> all the letter mixtures in this thing. You got Femlin, you got Artie, you got all this crap. Um, and it just doesn't stick in my head. Uh, took a couple of uh, reorg points as well so that I can increase all three of the units that I have available for that, if I so desire. Um, it may be more important to have units in the front, though. I don't know. Uh, I have more insurgency counters available now than I have insurgency points, so I'm not going to get anywhere. You know, I, I, it wasn't like before where I wanted to recycle my units, uh, but whatever. Uh, none of this really matters to me anymore, <laughs> if it ever did. Let's look at the Samosas, see if they have anything they want to do. A whole lot of options left there. Uh, shifted forces around, so I had the good armor in Managua. Again... You know, I don't think we're gonna destroy. I don't think we're gonna capture Managua in time. It's just a matter of the reduction factor. Once you get somebody in a city, and you know, you need once you get even huge odds with huge bonuses, you still only do three steps. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's just not gonna happen. And you know what? I'm not gonna waste any more time on this shit. Um, I believe. The Garda Nationale is going to be able to hold out through turn six and seven. Um, the fact that there's a, a CDS unit in Managua, that doesn't really make a damn bit of difference. Um, it's not like the Garda Nationale is attacking. It's not like that thing adds any strength. The only thing it does is the same thing the riot does, which, well, I'm overstacked. No. Um, which is to... Uh, uh, to cut that supply source if you haven't figured out a way to do it before that and clearly the thing you want to do right at the beginning of the game is slap down those two rides as soon as you have uh, this supply source cut off as soon as you have your own supply set up so you know I delayed a couple of turns in doing that without because I didn't realize what was going on maybe it shouldn't be done in turn one but it should be done pretty damn quickly because it just paralyzes the Samosa. They have no more air power. They have no more, um, no more capability to do, um, um, to, to, to launch any attacks. And they just become a sitting duck and there's nothing to this scenario. Um, so what do we got here? So yeah, the first thing I would have done on the, on turn one, I would have taken this cut off their two other supply sources, or maybe it's turn two that you can get there. I'm not sure. 
and otherwise I would have done things largely how I did. But the point is that the Samoza never would have gotten any counterattacks, never would have been able to handle things. Their strengths would have been halved for the entirety of the game. Um, this would have been a much easier task. As it stands, I don't think there's any possibility of taking uh, Managua. Um, what do I got? I got two turns of attacks. Um, there are one, two, I think six steps in Managua because of that armored unit. That's got additional steps to it. I may only have three, call it five steps. I can't do five steps of damage <laughs> in the course of two turns. So, um, there you have it. Let's send this shit up and never play this scenario again, except if you want to learn how riots work and what they could be used for. Yeah. Because, because honestly, it doesn't give you a chance to play around with all the neat tools that the Samoza have, you know, like planes. Uh, <laughs> that choice between bombing and counterinsurgency and everything. But you got to see how some of it worked within this when I didn't understand that I could have that how I should have played the scenario, uh, which is to say, because it's I go, you go, um, oh look, I didn't use my counterinsurgency, well then I have bombers available. It's not like you have to commit them, you know, much more sensible would be, I'm committing these planes to counterinsurgency, uh, you know, operations, uh, I don't know, I honestly, I just don't know, because if the Nicaragua, if the Sandinistas aren't performing insurgency placement, well, sure, it frees up your planes, why not? You know, I don't, I, I don't know how it should go. Um, and it gets even more confusing once you start looking at the order of the players starts to matter, right? So when you get to the bigger scenarios, both sides have insurgency. But the communists have to go first. So they place their insurgencies, the U.S. gets, uh, the U.S. allied side gets to react to those insurgencies and counterinsurge them. Great. The communist has its option to use the Nicaraguan planes to use them militarily, you know, against non-insurgents, right? To bomb actual units or to bomb uh, facilities. And oh gosh, now the U.S. gets to go and they get to choose whether or not to place their insurgency uh, units based on how um, the communists use their planes already. It's just troublesome. It feels like the two sides have very, very asymmetrical ways of doing the same kind of stuff, and that doesn't seem right at all to me. Like, <laughs> just, again, there may be reasons for it, I'm not an expert in the in the area, but it seems wrong. All right, let's send this shit up.